I'm so excited to introduce a brand new sermon series for the year. I, this, this, is gonna be, this is going to be something different that we've never done before. This is a, a series for the year entitled All. And I want to read to you today out of Mark chapter 12. We're going to start in verse 28. Mark chapter 12, verse 28. And one of the scribes came up and heard them disputing with one another and seeing that he, Jesus, answered them well, asked him, which commandment is the most important of all? Jesus answered the most important is here, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. Now, let me, let me just make that a little uh, more clear for you today. What he was really saying is there is only one true God, right? There is no other God beside our God. And so that's what he was actually saying there. And you shall love the Lord your God with with all your heart and with your mind and with your strength. Wow. And the second is this. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. And there is no other commandment greater than these. And the scribes said to him, you are right, teacher. You have truly said that he is one. I'd like to say he is the one, right? He is one, and there is no other besides him. And to love him with your heart and with your understanding and with your strength to love one's neighbor as oneself is much more than all whole burnt offerings and sacrifices. And when Jesus saw that he answered wisely, he said to him, you are not far from the kingdom of God. And after that, no one dare ask him any more questions. Wow. Let's pray today. Father, thank you so much. Lord, help me today to deliver your pure word. Father, as the waiter that gets to bring, that has the honor of serving the meal today. Father, don't let me taint the scriptures. Father, speak to us deep in our souls today. In Jesus' name we pray. And everyone said... Amen. You may be seated today. Um, listen, I want to set this up, uh, if you'll allow me to an overview of where we're going. If you've been with me for a while, you know that back in 2021, the Lord gave us a word, and the word was this, uh, that we were to be spirit-filled and rooted. Do you remember that back in 2021? Spirit-filled and rooted, and uh, I felt very strongly that the Lord would have us focus on those things. The Lord gave me a picture as we were going through this pandemic thing and I began to, to see a wolf that was coming to, uh, to scatter the sheep and I, I, I felt the spirit of the Lord say that we were to be spirit filled and rooted if we were going to be able to stand in the dark times that were coming and so we have focused a lot on being rooted. Uh, listen, I believe with all of my heart that that um, uh, being rooted and grounded and our roots growing down and understanding, having an understanding of the Word of God and having that stability in our life uh, is, is not just a suggestion that we need to grow in our faith and that simple membership, church attendance is not where it's at. 
When, when the storms begin to blow and uh, the devil begins to kick up dust, uh, your church attendance is not going to get you through the storm. Oh, man. Did y'all stay up late last night or what? I'm telling you, it's going to take more than your affiliation with a denomination to get you through the storms that are in front of us today. Come on. I'm telling you. Now, now listen, I believe that we have focused on the rooted part. I believe that we focused on uh, uh, discipleship, and we are continuing to focus on that. Listen, I believe with, uh, with all my heart that Wednesday nights is where it's at. Um, uh, listen, I, I, I want you to get this. Sunday, we come together, and we celebrate what God is doing. But I want to challenge you to go deeper. I want to challenge you to let your roots go down further. I want to challenge you, men, women, to come and be a part. We've got the women's uh, Bible study in here to, to teach uh, women how to be godly women and, and uh, how to nurture their families and, and how to grow in the kingdom. We've got three men's classes out there to, to help us set our GPS so that we're growing in God. We've got uh, truth trackers for our children that's teaching them the word of God and getting it in their hearts as David said that I might not sin against you oh God we've got a move of God that's happening over with our junior high and our high school students God's doing something over there for every age group there is something that will provoke you to grow along with the BEP Bible engagement that we're all doing together Tuesday nights we have our young adults we have a small group for our ladies um, uh, we are about to start um, uh, we, are, we are recruiting we are looking for those that um, want to host or lead small groups there's going to be training for that there's going to be vetting for that there's going to be growing for that and then we're going to be launching our small groups around uh, Easter time so I want to encourage you to get involved in more to grow yourself and so we've been focused on root but now I believe that we're also going to kick it up a notch in the area of being spirit filled listen when I was young I was stupid and, and, and listen the, 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 as the scripture says when I was young, I thought like a child, I acted like a child, but when I grew up, I put my stupid stuff away. Come on. I grew up and I began to act like a man. See, here's the thing. When I was young, I was embarrassed that we were spirit-filled. But may I tell you, I grew up and now I'm embarrassed that the church is not spirit-filled. The church doesn't understand how to walk in the supernatural anymore. The church doesn't understand the power and the presence of the Holy Spirit anymore. The church doesn't understand walking in the gifts of the Spirit on a daily basis anymore. And I believe that if we're going to make it in the dark times, a natural ability, natural knowledge, a natural day-to-day -day life will not be able to overcome the supernatural of the enemy Man, some of you is you're dead today come on something about being spirit filled and rooted now I believe that the Lord is challenging me and challenging us as a church for 2022 not to just continue in the word from 2021 to be rooted in spirit filled we are going to continue that because I believe that is the direction of the Lord without a doubt but the Lord began to speak to me and lead me to this passage of scripture that challenges when they ask Jesus what is the most important commandment of all he said to love the Lord your God with all 
Now, when we, when we look back at that and we understand uh, they, had, they had come to Jesus and they were just pelting him. They were doing everything they could to, uh, to try to put a stumbling block to get him to mess up. Matter of fact, Mark chapter 12, verse 13 says, and they sent to him some of the Pharisees and some of the Herodians to trap him in his talk. So um, they asked him, uh, uh, hey, is it lawful to pay? taxes they thought maybe they could get him tripped up in that and and he said bring me a coin and they brought him a coin he said whose pictures on it they said Caesar Augustus he said then render to Caesar what's Caesar's and render to God what's God's right and then they said uh, the Sadducees uh, uh, they didn't believe in the resurrection and and so they came with this big long question they uh, you know the law of Moses taught that hey you uh, uh, you know if, if your brother died and uh, uh, he hasn't had time to uh, to raise up seed you take your brother's wife uh, and you raise up seed to your brother and and so they start this thing and they said but the first brother died and then he married the second brother and and then the second brother died and and then he married the third brother and and y'all I'm already getting queasy just thinking about all the brother thing you know and it's just weird and and so by the time he got to the seventh brother and the seventh brother died and nobody had raised up seed to the woman then uh, the 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 the, they asked him, they said, hey, what in the, you know, when, when the resurrection, if there is a resurrection, then whose who's husband uh, is she when she gets to heaven? And Jesus says, y'all don't even know the scripture, man. He said, there's not going to be any marriage or given in marriage in heaven. And uh, so, I mean, they're just, they're just stunned. And so then this lawyer steps up and uh, uh, he, he says, hey, what is the most important commandment of all. And what do I have to do to inherit eternal life? And Jesus responds, love the Lord thy God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and with all your strength. Now, we're going we're gonna to walk through this today, but, uh, you know, where did Jesus come up with this truth, with this response, and what does it mean or look like to love God with all, and what does this look like to love him with all of your heart, your soul, your mind, and your strength. So that's where we're going to that's where we're going to go today is just kind of get an, an overview of where did this come from? What does it look like? What does this mean? So let's start with the first one. Where did this great truth come from? When Jesus responded to this lawyer, uh, what is the most important commandment? Jesus didn't just tell them something new or something random. How many understand that Jesus came to fulfill the law? Jesus came to confirm the law. So, so where did Jesus come up with this, love the Lord thy God with all your heart, your soul, your mind, your strength? Now listen, I'm going to implore you today, uh, we're not in children's church. I know if I, if I read this to children, man, their minds would be off in the first uh, 20 seconds. But I'm going to implore you today, I want to read the scripture to you. I want to go over to the Old Testament, and I want to establish where this came from and why it was so important. Deuteronomy chapter 6, verse 1. Moses is deliberating. Moses is delivering the law to the people of God. And this is what the scripture says. Now this is the commandment, the statutes and the rules that the Lord your God commanded me to teach you that you may do them in the land to which you are going over to possess it, that you may fear the Lord your God and your son and your son's son 
by keeping all of his statutes and his commandments which I command you all the days of your life and that your days may be long hear therefore O Israel and be careful to do them that it go well with you how many are ready for it to go well with you and what's this not only for it to go well with you and that you may multiply greatly how many is ready for some multiplication all right so so he's giving us some instruction here as he says um, that you may multiply greatly as the Lord the God of your fathers has promised you in the land flowing with milk and honey here we go verse 4 Hear, O Israel the Lord our God the Lord is one you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart with all your soul with all your might and these words that I command you today shall be on your heart now I wish you if you have a, a real Bible or, a, or, or an actual tangible Bible circle those last four or five words there shall be on your heart uh, circle those last five words or if you have the ability to mark that in your electronic Bible do that as well but verse 7 says this you shall teach them diligently to your children my Lord that is a problem today Come on now, I'm, I'm just telling you that we are so busy about life. We are so busy about all the other things going on. We're so important. We're the doctors, the lawyers, we're the managers, we're the business owners, we're the teachers, we're the banker, we're this, we're that. And we have time for everything but digging into God's Word and teaching our kids and grandkids about the things of God. Mm. and shall talk to them when you sit in your house and when you walk by the way and when you lie down and when you rise up and you shall bind them as a sign on your hand man I had a palm pilot before they were ever invented how many know what I'm talking about uh, when I didn't want to forget something, I'd write it on my, and if I really didn't want to forget something, I wouldn't write it on my palm. I'd turn it over and write it on this part so I could see it, and I wouldn't wash it off right away, right? And uh, uh, so he's saying, write it as a sign on your hand so it's ever before you, and, uh, and it'll be frontlets between your eyes. So in other words, they put frontlets on a, uh, on a, on a horse's uh, uh, eye so that it, it'll go forward, so it, it won't get distracted from the right to the left it uh, they'll, they'll just stay on the track and they'll they'll press forward frontlets between you and shall write them on the doorpost of your house and on your gates uh, and the Lord your God and when the Lord your God brings you into the land that he swore to your fathers Abraham Isaac and Jacob to give you with great and good cities that you did not build and houses full of good things that you did not fill and cisterns that you did not dig and vineyards and olive trees that you did not plant and when you eat them and are full then take care lest you forget the Lord who brought you out of the land of Egypt and out of the house of slavery it is the Lord your God you shall fear him you shall serve and by his name you shall swear you shall not go after other gods the gods of the peoples um, who are around you for the Lord your God in your midst is a jealous God lest the anger of the Lord your God be kindled against you and he destroy you from the face of the earth and you and you shall not put the Lord your God to the test as they tested him in Massa you shall diligently keep the commandments of the Lord your God and his testimonies and his statutes which he commanded you and we could go on and on there but listen I here's what I want you to get Whenever, uh, whenever we look at this passage of Scripture and they're asking Jesus, what are the most important commandments? Uh, Jesus responds and says to love the Lord your God with... <clears throat> to love the Lord your God with... 
all uh, your heart, your soul, your mind, and strength, and your neighbor as yourself. And what the point is, is these are actually, these two commandments are actually the foundation on which all of the other commandments depend, which all of the other commandments must flow out of and rely on are to love the Lord your God with all and to love your neighbor as yourself. Without these two commandments, all of the rest of them are in vain. It's not possible without these two being the foundation of everything. That's why he's saying that these are the most two important commandments. And if you do this, Listen, he said, I will deliver you from slavery. I will deliver you into a land of milk and honey. I will bless you if you love me with all. God, my friend, will still do this for us today. Listen, but their, their reply, I listen to this. Their reply is, oh, Moses, this is all too hard for us. We can't do this. And God's reply is this. Watch. He said, do not say, you'll remember this out of the New Testament, do not say, who will go up to the mountain and bring God's will back down to us again? Or not the mountain, who will go up to heaven and bring God's word and God's will back down to, again? What were they referring to? They were referring to Moses. Remember, Moses went up the mountain. They said, Moses, don't, don't let God talk to us, man. They, they were looking at that, that, uh, uh, that huge mountain. It was, it was dark. It had a cloud on it there was thunderings and rumblings and and the glory of God was all over the mountain and they were they were so fearful they said Moses you go up and see what God uh, wants us to do and you bring back down word again and, and and God said don't say don't say who's going to go up there and bring the word back down again uh, listen remember he said it's going to be on your heart uh, if you'll go back to Hebrews you'll remember uh, that um, that he talks uh, in Hebrews and he said, uh, he said, I will put them uh, on your mind and on your heart. Uh, I'm going to write them, right? Uh, I'm going to take a heart of stone out of you and I'm going to put a heart of flesh in you. So here they were saying these commandments, this, all of this that God is commanding is so great. Listen, yes, God knew that, y'all. God knew that all of the commandments that he ordered them to do was too much for them he was setting us up for the coming of Jesus. He was setting us up for the transformation, the rebirth of Jesus Christ, where Jesus would renew us and put a new heart on the inside of us, y'all. So God knew that it would be too hard for his people to keep the law, so they had to walk in faith before the cross, and now we're walking in faith after the cross, and we're walking in faith in the fact that we are made brand new that God put a new heart in us uh, and he wrote it uh, uh, he put it in our minds the law of God in our minds uh, and he wrote it on the, the tables of our heart uh, and he transformed us uh, and now uh, he has given us the ability to do what we couldn't do to love God with all and to love our neighbor as ourself uh, and then everything else flows out of that wow isn't that the coolest thing Wow, where did this great truth come from? Jesus reached back and began to show them what the scripture said. Number two, what does it mean to love God with all? What does it mean? Now, now y'all listen, I, I just got to be honest with you. I, I'm a man. I, you start talking to me about all that love, ooey, gooey stuff. I just want something I can whoop. You know, I just want something I can fight. I just want something I can conquer. Give me a list. I can, I can accomplish that. But then you start talking about that love stuff. Come on now. All the women are going, oh, we understand. What does it mean? Love God with all. 
to read some commentary to you. We first need to know how God defines love. The Hebrew word is ahab. And it means to have affection for, desire, delight in, or be fond of. It implies an inherent inclination of the mind and the tendencies of the affection and denotes a strong emotional attachment for and a desire to be in the presence of the object of love. The Greek word is agapeo, to have a preference for or to wish well, to regard the welfare of. It is to take pleasure in, to prize it above other things, to be unwilling to abandon it, or to do without, to welcome with desire, to long for. We diminish the meaning of love when we view it simply as a simple emotion or feeling. And therefore subject to change. I may love someone because they are kind to me. If they stop being kind to me, then I no longer love them because my love was simply a positive feeling based on a current circumstance. Love is more than that. It's a decision of the will to act in light of a deep abiding concern and affection for the object of our love. Listen, I'm, I'm so tired of hearing couples say, we're just not in love anymore. I just, uh, you know, uh, whoever that was, I, we've lost that love and feeling. Yeah, oh, that love and feeling. I, you know, I, I don't know. I, I'm not a singer. I guess y'all can tell that. Anyway, I, 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 you know, I, I'm so sick of hearing that. You know, it, it's not based on a, an emotion or a feeling or, or a, a certain circumstance or when you do this, I love you, and when you don't do this, I don't love you. That's not, that's not what we're talking about at all. This, um, this love goes deeper. This love uh, uh, supersedes everything else in our life. It changes everything else in our life our life what does it mean to love God with all remember God wants us to love him with the kind of unrestrained love that he loves us let me, let me show you this out of Romans chapter 8 verse 31 what then shall we say of these things? If God be for us, who can be against us? Man, we love that scripture. Well, if God be for us, who can be against us? And we quote that all day long. But look at the scripture that comes right after that. He who did not spare his own son, but gave him up for us all, how will he not also with him graciously give us all things? Listen, I, I want you to understand the power, the veracity, the amazing power of God's love towards you and I. He withheld nothing from us when he gave us Jesus. What does it look like to love God with all? Every part, nothing held back, nothing divided, nothing shared, nothing diluted, nothing hidden. I, as we were reading through the scriptures, and I, I've been I've been mulling over this uh, uh, I've been mulling over this for for quite some time this topic, and and um, uh, as, as I'm reading through I'm reading through Ephesians, and it begins to talk about it begins to talk about the uh, the marriage, it begins to talk about the husband and the wife, and and uh, he begins to say things like, for this reason the the man will leave his father and mother and he will cleave to his wife and and the two of them will become one and and he said this um, this mystery this is a mystery I'm not just talking about uh, a man and a woman I'm talking about Christ in the church and this is a great mystery and listen I begin to think about that and and when you if you understand that whenever uh, Jesus Jesus left the father Jesus left his home uh, and he came down to earth uh, to meet his bride he came down to earth to redeem his bride he came down to earth uh, to pay for his bride uh, and listen uh, when a husband uh, takes a wife and the two become one uh, everything that the 
the husband has uh, becomes the bride. And Jesus said, uh, he said, I am in you, Father, and you are in me, and we are in them. And that tells us, uh, that shows us uh, the veracity, the all of God's love, the unrestrained of God's love for us. Wow! But watch this. Ephesians chapter 3 says that you being rooted and grounded in love <clears throat> that you, well, we've been talking about being rooted hadn't we that's a little interesting that you it is so amazing it is so amazing that people are so soon removed from their faith Come on now. So soon uprooted when things don't go our way. When the storms of life start kicking up some dust, we, we seem to be so easily uprooted. But he said being rooted and grounded in love may have strength to comprehend with all the saints what is the breadth, the length, the height, the depth, and to know the love of Christ that surpasses our ability to understand that you may be filled with that you may be filled with the fullness of God when we begin to understand and comprehend the veracity the, the scope of God's love for us we'll be filled with all the fullness of God now now I, I wish you'd write this down in your phone on a piece of paper in your Bible I really wish you'd write this statement with the all of God comes an expectation of reciprocation of our all let me read that again with the all of God comes an expectation of reciprocation of our all because God is a jealous God let me read this. James puts it this way, James chapter 4, verse 4. You adulterous people. Man, James just gets right to it. He doesn't do any, any dancing around it, does he? Says, you adulterous people, do you not know that friendship with the world is enmity with God? Therefore, whoever wishes to be a friend of the world makes himself an enemy of God. Or do you suppose it is to no purpose that the scripture says he yearns jealously over the spirit that he has made to dwell in us. Wow, listen. I, I, Roderick, Olivia, listen. I, how long y'all been married? Nine years? Okay, all right. Now, now I, I just, I, I just want to pose a question, Olivia. If, if Roderick had a proposed and said, "Hey, baby, how you doing?" Hey, uh, I, listen, I, I got you on Monday, Wednesday, Friday. The rest of the time in mind. Now, now, I, 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 I'm gonna love you with most of my heart, but some of my heart's still back there with with uh, so and so. I, you know what? I think Roderick would have had a blue eye when he got, when, when Olivia got through with him, she would have kicked him up one side of the street and down the other. How many know what I'm talking about? She would have whooped him nine times Christmas. I, I, I mean, she would have tore him up. Why? Why? God doesn't want part of us. God wants all of us. All of us. Mm. 
Number three. What does this look like to love God with our entire being? Each of these words, heart, soul, mind, strength, can be explored as to how we love God, but collectively means a, a greater lesson. We are not to love God with only part of ourselves, but are to measure every thought, every motion, every feeling, every word, every action in light of our desire to please and honor God. We are to pursue our love for Him in every aspect of daily life with all that we are. What does wholehearted love even look like? Listen, I, I, I don't believe that God is pleased with today's kind of Christianity. I just don't. I, I don't believe that we get to walk, that we're walking in the fullness of God with today's kind of Christianity. I don't, I don't see that there's a lot of stability and a lot of strength in today's kind of Christianity. I, I, I don't think that we're pressing forward and we're moving forward and we're pleasing to God and we're walking into the fullness of the promised land that He has promised us. The blessing and the favor of God by hanging out with our buds at church and some kind of church membership and some kind of church attendance. I don't believe that's what pleases God. I believe God is calling His people in these last times to a greater relationship relationship uh, to a greater intimacy with him uh, where we're loving God uh, with all of our heart with all of our soul with all of our mind with all of our strength what's the difference by the way the heart our heart is considered the center of our physical and spiritual life it encompasses our passions, our desires, our affections. According to Vine's Expository Dictionary, the word heart came to stand for man's entire mental and moral activity. The heart and soul are different words, but both represent the inner and immaterial part of man as separate from his physical body. The soul. The soul is literally the breath of life. God breathed into man and we became a living soul, right? The soul of man really stands for the will of man. The mind. The mind is the faculty of understanding that enables us to imagine and to think and to reason. Strength, our ability, our force, our power within ourselves, everything we tend to rely on. What does it look like to love God with all our entire being every part of our being nothing hidden nothing held back nothing divided what does it look like my question today my time that I want to spend with you for the rest of the service 
is I want to ask you a question, whether you're watching online or whether you're in the sanctuary with us today, is will you take this journey with us this year? Will, listen, the, I do not believe that we're going to be able to stand in the times to come with the kind of Christianity that is being taught today. The kind of low obligation, low commitment, low participation. God deserves our all. Again, church membership, church attendance, church affiliation. It's not going to enable us to stand in these times that are approaching. I, now, if you're easily offended, you're about to get offended. But I, a friend of ours, Pastor Judy, was at a leadership roundtable this week. And the leader, a friend of ours said, you know what? I want to work with a fat staff. Everybody's kind of, huh? What, what, do you, what, what does he mean? A fat staff. It's an acronym for flexibility, approachability, and teachability. Now, just hear me out. Hear me out before you get all bent out of shape. See, our young people today, they're very flexible. A lot of flexibility. But when times get hard and difficult, Oh, we commit to that. Oh, we commit to this. Oh, we're going we're gonna to do this. We're going to live for God with all until times get rough. And change this, change all. Oh, we're flexible. But the younger tend to be flexible but not teachable. Old people, turn your hearing aid up. We tend to be teachable, but not very flexible. Teach me something new, but don't change nothing on me because I ain't flexible. Come on now. Approachability now, that has nothing to do with age. That has more to do with your nature and your character. I want to take a journey this year with a bunch of fat people. I want to know if you'll walk with us this year and let's figure out what it means to love the Lord our God with all of our heart with all of our soul with all of our mind with all of our strength I would you stand to your feet with me today I I believe that if you'll walk this journey with us, if you'll walk this year out with us, I believe God's going to begin to reveal places in our heart that's not all. I believe that He's going to reveal some things in our soul and in our will that's not all. I believe He's going to reveal some places in our mind 
That's not all. There's some places in our strength. That's not all. As we walk this thing out with Him, are you willing to go on this journey and say, God, I'm an open book and I, I'm, not, I'm not into this attendance thing. I'm not into this hanging out with my buds thing. I want to go all in. I want to love you. And that's the most important commandment of all that everything else depends on. I want you to take me on a journey. Listen, I, this is not about a, a one service thing. Oh God, you got all, oh God, here it is. You know what? I, we're such a complex being that I believe God's gonna peel back layers and layers and layers and layers and layers and reveal things to us that we didn't even realize were there. How many would say, Pastor, I'm ready for God to take me on this journey to all. I'm ready, I'm ready. I, I, want, I want all of God and I'm ready to give God all. Would you just, we've, we've got a little bit of time this morning. Would you just get out of your seat and just come and find a place to get along with God? Maybe there in your home, you could just find a place to kneel and say, God, take me on a journey. God, take me on this journey.